Hello everybody and here again down on the beach once again another beach vlog this is a bit of a follow-up to one I did recently called the sea the sea in which I was asking why we felt that the sea affected us so much got lots of good responses and lots of good ideas some of which I had thought about myself but uh, I've done a bit of research into afterwards and Pippoli sort of said to me why don't you do a vlog about all those bits and pieces so I have done thought about it again myself come up with a few other extra bits and pieces but a uh, couple of facts and figures for you some of which I'm sure you're aware because you're in intelligent people anyway but 71% of the earth's surface is actually covered in water so we're very very used to it more or less wherever we are we're going to come into contact with it sooner or later also 60% of the human body is actually made up of water we are 60% water and apparently that amazingly enough that arises to about 78% for a new born baby or a baby that's about a year old so a newborn baby 78% water which I find absolutely phenomenal I knew it's quite a lot and obviously some some sort of fruits, vegetables, plants, etc. That figure can actually go up to around about 98%. So it's hardly surprising that water has an effect. We are mainly water. Also, as someone pointed out, um, we evolved from the sea. You know, all those millennia ago, I don't know how long ago it was, uh, I wasn't around, <laughs> contrary to popular reports, but uh, uh, we did evolve from the sea somewhere. We crawled out of the oceans at some time onto the land and we've evolved from there. There's still creatures around supposedly in the seas. Crocodiles I think are one of those sort of uh, very distant relations but there are still mammals around that sort of go back to that sort of time, throw back to that time. And we've evolved ever since. We've evolved so much that we don't even have to swim now <laughs> because I'm not a great swimmer. If I was to get into the sea which is out there it wouldn't do me any good. So that's sort of a proof that maybe we are still evolving even now. Also, from a sort of a human, human population type of thing, if you go back to the ancient civilizations, they all grew up around water as well. They were so much influenced by water, the need for water. Because water equals life. If you don't have water, you don't have life regardless of where you are. I mean, we're very lucky to live on the earth, which is so well positioned to actually support liquid water and therefore support life. If you look throughout the solar system, there's no other planets that can support life the way that we know it. So, and possibly there is no, none anywhere else, but that's a topic for another video maybe. But uh, getting back to the, the subject of civilization, if you go back to like the Garden of Eden, from the sort of biblical times, that's about, that was around water and they think that that was sort of where modern day Iraq is now, the Tigris and the Euphrates, great rivers of ancient civilizations. That's where they think the Garden of Eden was. And that's where the first great civilizations of the world in sort of Mesopotamia and all that sort of area, that's where they grew up. They grew up around rivers or seas or whatever. If you look even now, all the great ports of the world, all the great, sorry, all the great cities of the world are all based around water somewhere or other. They're on lakes, they're on rivers, they're on coasts as well. You know, you could probably name just about all of them. London, for example, you know, even New York, San Francisco's on the sea, all of these sort of great sea ports from the, from the past. We need the water for trade, we need it for, for life, but we also need it to live as well. So uh, we've grown up around there as well. Another thing that someone pointed out, actually, John Reagan, I believe it was, was saying about sort of John Lennon, another sort of way of looking at this, about how he couldn't write music and he had to go to the sea, although he'd lived near the sea most of his life, coming from Liverpool. He uh, got back to the sea, listened to the sea, and there's that rhythm to the sea, isn't there? We all have uh, say, I was talking about the rhythm of the waves and, that, and that's one reason why we're so attracted to it. Maybe another reason why we're so musical is because of that rhythm, that sort of inbuilt rhythm, because inside of us, We've got a big rhythmic tool, it's called the heart, which is pumping sort of liquid around our body sort of 70 odd times a minute, depending on how uh, old you are, or maybe how fit you are as well. And uh, So we've got an inbuilt rhythm in that way, so maybe that's why we connect with the sea, if nothing else. It's that sort of, uh, that sort of rhythmic quality to it, sort of the waves come in, as you might be able to hear them in the background, if you can hear them sort of coming in at however many times per minute, our heart's beating so many times per minute, so there's an inbuilt rhythm to it. And um, John also mentioned something about reggae as well, and I never thought about that <laughs> in terms of the sea. But, um, so there's lots of different ways that we could possibly be uh, affected by the sea or water generally, and reasons that we are. I'd be very interested if anybody else can think of any other variations of what I've said. Um, one other one, which I did think of myself, is the importance, I'm not a religious person, but the importance that water has in religion. I mentioned earlier on about the Garden of Eden being sort of near the Tigris and the Euphrates, uh, Tigris and the Euphrates down there in modern day Iraq. Um, all of these other religions, if you think the Christians' religions, we go to baptise, don't we? 
and we either do it by immersing ourselves in water in rivers, River Jordan and all that sort of thing, or in fonts now in churches, we still get people who do sort of fully baptise themselves, you know, sort of immerse themselves in rivers and water nowadays. Uh, the Hindu religion, I've been lucky enough to go to uh, India and was lucky enough to go to a place called Varanasi, which is on the Ganges, a very, very important place for the Hindu religion. They call it the sort of mother Ganges, it's like the main, one of the main sort of stays of the Hindu religion is the river Ganges. They have to bathe in it if they can, they're cremated on it, there's, you know, and so it has such an integral part of their lives. If you look at the uh, Islam as well, so much is involved with water with that. The sort of the ablutions that they do, the water, you know, the cleansing they do before prayer. Their gardens, if you look at the gardens, they've got water running everywhere. It's an integral part of their religion. So, it's water touches ourselves, our lives, in so many different ways. I'm sure you can tell me a few more, but there's a few for you. Sort of religion, the actual fact, the evolutionary side, the rhythmical side of it as well, that's, sort of, that's inbuilt into us. So, um, lots of different foods for thought, or <laughs> drinks for thought, maybe. Um, any thoughts? More subjects, more ideas. Great, bring them on. Let's have a, a big debate about this. I've had some great ideas already from people talk, talking about this water and life and the rhythm of life and all that sort of thing. So uh, the more the merrier, should we say. Anyway, thanks to Pippoli for uh, suggesting this. Thanks to John for his uh, suggestions as well about the music one, which I hadn't thought of. So and thanks to everybody else who's done comments and who's going to put comments on this as well. So uh, anyway, thanks for your time. I'll speak to you again soon. Goodbye.